In this video, we're going to talk about creating source snap policies on our firewall and how those work on the internet. If we look at our network diagram, uh, previously we'd created a security policy that allowed the servers to dock to the DMZ. And that worked perfectly fine. Uh, in order to, for the servers to be able to communicate with the internet, we will also need a security policy for this for the Palo Alto to route the information from the security zone out to the internet zone. However, we will need also what's called a NAT policy. And the reason for that is because out here on the internet is what utilizes uh, public IP ranges. However, our internal network uses private IP ranges. In order for something that's on a private network to talk to a public network, it has to NAT utilizing a public IP. In which case, we're going to use this one right here. So let's see how that works. First off, we'll start by creating a new security policy that allows servers to talk to the internet. So we're back on the Palo Alto, and we can see that we have our existing policy that we've created to allow servers to talk to the DMZ. I could go ahead and I could click add and I could create a new policy that allows servers to talk to the internet but what I can also do is once I've highlighted this I can come down here and I can select clone. Basically that creates a copy of that rule and I'll say OK and then it created a copy right there. Permit server to DMZ-1. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and then rename it and I'll call it permit server to internet. Source is still servers. Destination, in this case, I want to change from DMZ to untrusted. Application, service, actions uh, still allow everything. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK and commit. Now, just to show that this is not everything that's needed, I have here a ping to 8888 out to Google. And if I hit enter, it will continuously ping Google to see if I can communicate. And what we'll see is as the commit finishes, the pings don't go through. Even though the security policy allows it, the fact that we're communicating to the internet means we need NATing. We need to add, uh, translate our addresses. So I'll leave that ping going and then I'll click close. So now that we have our security policy, we also need to create our NAT policy. So still on the policies, on the left hand side, we go over to NAT. And now we can go ahead and we can create a NAT policy. So down here at add, and I want this to be as simple as possible. Let's call uh, permit server to internet and original packet. Again, starting from the left to the right. Uh, source zone, go ahead and click add, and I'll choose servers. Destination zone, I will choose my untrusted. And then destination interface, in theory I could say any, uh, but since the untrusted zone only has one interface, it's a little bit easier if I specify it manually. So 1-3, no services. I don't need to specify any uh, specific source addresses or destination addresses that I want to restrict, even though I could. I then click on translated packet and I see I have two different options right here. I have a source NAT and a destination NAT. If we talk about that very briefly, a source NAT, basically since we are coming from the servers out to the internet, we want to change this IP. The servers are initiating it, therefore they are the source. In which case I need to do a source NAT. Now, the, conversely, there is an option if somebody came from the internet and wanted to talk to my servers, here the servers are my destination. Therefore, I would need destination NAT. In this scenario, again, we're just talking about source NAT. So, let's do that. So, tra source address and translation, translation type. There are reasons why you would want to choose different options here. I would, nor if you're not entirely sure about that, I would suggest a dynamic IP at port. Uh, address type, we want to specify the interface address. 
and then which interface? Well, Ethernet 1.1, and then which IP address? That would be the public interface on that, on that uh, sorry, public IP on that interface. So I'd say okay. And before I click commit, we've still got our ping going over here. Our responses are still timing out. So let's go ahead and click commit and commit. And now that we have both the security policy and the NAT policy changing the addresses, those pings, once this commit completes, should begin to go through. And there we can see the responses from 8888 are coming right in. 